Good morning and welcome to the weekly market update with me, David Madden. Today's date is Monday the 18th of November 2019 and the time has just gone 11.35 GMT. And it's been a fairly quiet start to the European trading session. Uh, we, heard, we heard over the weekend uh, there was trade talks uh, between the US and China and apparently they were quote-unquote uh, constructive. So there's a continued sense of optimism in relation to the US-China trade talks. Also out of China, um, the Chinese Central Bank have lowered the repo rate by five basis points. Uh, it was the first time in, since, since 2015 that uh, rate has been lowered. And on its own, it is much of a move, but it just ties in with the wider, with the wider uh, sentiment that globally central banks are kind of loosening monetary policy. Uh, which is kind of a, kind of uh, you know which is both kind of beneficial to the stock markets, but also kind of paints a picture that the global economy is slowing down, and various different uh, countries are using whatever tools that they have at their disposal to assist the economy. Uh, we have yet to hear uh, President Trump's decision in relation to what's going to happen with the tariff potential tariffs on EU car autos, cars, and vehicles. And in a way, that's sort of acting as a cap to European equity markets. Uh, you know, we, we've seen strong levels in the DAX and the CAC recently, but they can't in the, in the last few weeks. But we can't, they can't really kind of drive ahead, um, just because no pun intended. They can't really drive ahead just because some traders are a bit concerned that you know they want to sit in the fence until President Trump makes a decision, because obviously it could be potentially high risk buying up lots of German or French stocks, you know, manufacturing. Um, the uh, car, uh, auto stocks on the other chance President Trump does decide to impose the uh, impose the, the, the levies on EU vehicles, but th there is talk that he will, whenever he does make a decision, that decision will be to defer it to, to defer it for another six months. So these are the kind of the big issues that are going on uh, in terms of the financial markets. Uh, also, uh, the British pound is doing quite well this morning. Uh, what we've seen is. Numerous in, uh, opinion polls put the Boris Johnson's Conservative Party in the lead. Uh, the, the Tory party have already struck a deal with the EU. The, the Tory party are pro-business. This is what this is what, what's benefiting the British pound. But more recently, Prime Minister Johnson has stated that every MP, every, every Conservative MP fighting this next general election, has pledged to back the deal that he's already agreed with the EU. So traders are looking as a sign if the Tories do win this election and they do get a majority, this could be kind of like the final leg of the Brexit uh, saga, whereby it, it looked to kind of you know. They would all, hopefully, if, they, if, if, if the Tory party got a majority, it would then look like, uh, essentially, kind of look like, it would, would look like we're pointing to that um, those MPs, the Tory MPs, would then back Mr. Johnson's, um, the deal that he struck with, with, uh, with, with Brussels. So, hence why we're seeing strength in the British pound. Uh, what I'll do now is take a look at the week ahead article and then I'll also look through some of the major markets. So, the week ahead article can be found on our website. Go to cmcmarkets.com under insights, news and analysis, and you'll find this article. So looking ahead to tomorrow, full year figures from EasyJet. Uh, tomorrow we have third quarter figures from Home Depot. Uh, this week on Wednesday and Wednesday and Friday, we have inflation numbers from Canada as long as well as retail sales figures from Canada. Uh, on Wednesday, we have the minutes from the latest meeting of the Federal Reserve. On Wednesday, we also have third quarter figures from Target. On Thursday, we have third quarter numbers from William Hill here in the UK. Royal Mail will, oh, on Thursday will also deliver their um, first half numbers. Uh, we have the minutes from the ECB, uh, from the ECB um, policy meeting on Thursday. And on Thursday, uh, we have third quarter figures out from the gap. And on Friday, we have um, flash PMI reports out of Germany and France. Uh, starting off now with the FTSE 100. So the FTSE, broadly speaking, you know, since early October, so for about six weeks, broadly been pushing higher. Um, obviously, we've been edging a bit lower ever so recently, but we've managed to kind of hang in around this red line here, the 30 moving average, uh, and that comes to play at seven thousand, just north of seven thousand three hundred. Uh, and we're and we're north of that level as it stands. If you could hold above the 200 moving average, it's likely that the, that the kind of recent trend for the past six seven weeks is going to continue. Should that be the case, we could be looking at retesting 7,400 up toward this area here, the early November highs in a 
430 odd there thereabouts and if you go beyond that we could then be looking at potentially targeting this area here in around 7470 so keep an eye on the zone uh, should the wider upper trend continue and if you do manage to have a fairly decent move to the downside uh, and if the lows manage to take out the lows of, of, uh, of last week and Friday uh, this area here we could then be heading back down toward the psychologically important 7000 metric uh, and we can see here 7200 area here and uh, we can see here that that, that 7200 acted as a support acted as a solid consolidation uh, in October so if the metric has been an area in have been important in the past it makes it it'll be more likely so in the future take a look now what's going on over in Germany on the DAX so only last week we saw the DAX hit a level last seen uh, since early 2018 so give an indicator of give an indication of how strong the DAX is it was uh, January 2018 we we're at level that so give an indication of how bullish the market is but if you look at the price action in the last week or two, it's been very much kind of range bound. That's not really going to push any, any higher, but that's really moved the whole lot any lower. Like I said, the, the lack of clarity in relation to EU tar uh, auto tariffs is an issue um, for the DAX. And what we see here on the MACD indicator, the MACD histogram, the positive momentum completely faded away, and we're actually now, see we're actually now in seeing uh, an increase in negative momentum. Uh, so be mindful of that. So could, this could be a sign that we could be looking at the uh, the bulls who were in control for a number of weeks appear to be kind of running out of steam. So we could look for a bit of a pullback in the market, potentially back toward this area here in around 12,000, just well, south of 13,000, 12,980, or perhaps even down toward this area here in around 12,800. But keep in mind, the wider upper trend is still very much in play. Uh, so if the market does manage to get, continue on and the, the recent trend, and if you take out recent, if you take out the recent highs. That would suggest that we're in for, in for a further uh, upward, upward move. And should that be the case, we can really get track this area here, the highs of late January 2018, and that's in around the 13,600 mark. Um, we we'll take a look at what's going on over in the US. US markets are flying it. You know, re regularly seeing record highs across the major US indices, and it would appear that the Dow Jones is going to post another all time high. So the, the, tr the sentiment is very much to the upside. The markets are pushing higher. They're pointing to all-time highs. It is an increase in positive momentum. Markets are looking quite strong. So we could be looking at target, you know, in the near term, we're expecting the market to open in around 28,060 odd. We could be looking at targeting 28,100, 28,200, these sorts of levels. If you do have a pullback in the market, what we could see is we could see the market find this support from in around this area here, in around 12,500, 12,400, this zone here. Um, as, as potential areas of support, and even if you have a size of break below that, support can be found in this blue line here, the 50 moving average, and that comes to play in around 12, sorry, in around 27,057. I take a look, check out the S&P 500, fairly similar situation on the S&P 500. We're posted all-time highs on Friday. We're expecting yet another all-time high, so sentiment is very is clearly strong. We're seeing an increase in positive momentum, so so the upward move in the underlying market has been confirmed by a steady increase in the MACD indicator. So things are looking quite well on that front. So we're expecting the S&P 500 to, to open around 3,125. So we could be looking at targeting 3,130, 40, so on and so forth uh, in the near term. A move lower might find some support from this zone here in around. 3066 and if you, even if you go below that this area here in around 3025 might act as support and, and even if you move below that this blue line here the 50 moving average which comes to play at 3009 that might act as support should we see a fairly sizable pullback in the S&P 500 take a look at the, some currencies starting off with the euro versus US dollar so the wider trend is still very much to the downside so we can't really can ignore that. But recently, in the last few weeks, we have seen, broadly speaking, a push to the upside in uh, in the euro versus the US dollar. Um, and we can see here that the metric is back above. It briefly traded below 110 and it's been pushing higher since. And negative momentum is declining. And we're, back, and we're making gains beyond the 50 moving average. And if you can hold above the 50 moving average, that blue line there, 
in at 1 star 1041. If you can hold above that area, we can then be looking at kind of head back up towards kind of 111 area. And then beyond that, we can look at retesting this zone here in around 1 spot 11.79, which kind of is broadly speaking the kind of highs that we saw in October, but also coincides with the 200 moving average, uh, this, this red line here. Uh, if you do manage to kind of drop, turn over on itself yet again, and we take off the recent lows here in around 1 spot 09.89, drop below that, could take us back down, could see us heading back down towards 109, and potentially back down towards the recent lows that we saw in early October. In around one spot 0879. Take a look at the British pound. As I mentioned, starting to do well today after Boris got, got his uh, got all the MPs standing, all the Tory MPs to pledge his, their, their support for the deal he struck with Brussels. So we saw obviously I've seen a major rebound in the British pound in the last couple of months. Sterling has been pushing higher the last few sessions. There's been a steady decline in negative momentum, so we, so we're, things are heading. So the fact that that uh, which kind of adds weight to the argument that we're going to see a push higher in the um, in pound dollar, or, or at least it's, it's, uh, um, it's confirming the, um, the the recent positive move. So if we do press on higher from here, we could be looking at retesting one one spot thirty, and beyond that, we could, we could be start retesting the recent high at one spot thirty twelve, and a move beyond that. Could take us up to this area here, uh, the highest that we saw in eight, late early May, in at one spot 31.78. Any move to the downside could find some support sub 128, below, you know, the, the recent lows were one spot 27.68, uh, and a move, move below that could um, could put this this red line on the uh, on the radar in a, in at one spot 27.03. Take a look now at what's going on in gold. So the gold market had a phenomenal rally into September, really hit a six-year high, but ever since then it's actually been pushing a bit lower. Um, take a look at the gold market. It's really kind of failed to kind of struggle to get above the kind of 15, 19 mark. So it's been acting as a bit of a cap ever so ever recent ever so recently. Uh, and at the downside, um, the, the level that we hit here was a level. Um, last seen um, in August, so it reached a three month low not that long ago and uh, should we continue to kind of press a lower from here we could be looking at targeting this area here in around 14.30 as a potential area of support for the further for, should the market continue to move to the downside so notice how after hitting a six year high we've been kind of by and large seen a few kind of higher highs and lower lows so things are still looking really to be uh, negative in the near term for gold. So a drop back below the recent low could take us back down toward this zone here in around 14.30. And if we move below that, we could be heading back down toward the psychologically important 1400 mark. See what's going on on Brent oil. So if we draw a, a, a low between a line between the lows of October and entry kind of early uh, in, in through early October and also through late October, we get this trend line here, which has been supported nicely um, on, on a few occasions. And essentially, while we hold above that, that trend line, it's likely we could see uh, f further moves to the upside. And should we press on higher from here, we could be looking at retesting this red line here, the trend moving average in a 64 spot 86. And a move beyond that, and Brent could take us up toward this area here, uh, the highs of mid-September in around 65 spot 79. If you do have a fairly sizable break below this trend line, we can then look at retesting this zone here, just south of $60 a barrel. It's obviously a big psychological number, but also acting as support uh, at the end of October. And lastly but not least, WTI. Obviously, it's a fairly similar chart to what we saw on Brent. So once again. If we draw a, low bet a line between the lows of October uh, and kind of mid-October, we get this trend line here. Notice how in WTI um, the market is comfortably above it, but it hasn't even really kind of retested it more recently. So the market's well above it, the, um, the, the, the trend line. But on top of that, it's actually managed to hold above, you know, close above and trade above this red line here, the trading moving average. So it, it seems that the, um, the, the WTI market is in, is in, is in far better, is in better, better shape in the in the Brent market, and if we look the press on higher from here, and if you could take out this this area here in around fifty eight dollars a barrel, we could then be heading back up toward the kind of psychologically important sixty bucks a barrel. Any moves to the downside 
in, um, in WTI could find some support from this blue line here. The 50 to moving average, and that comes into play at 55 spot 67. And if you have a slice of movement on that, we can head back down toward this trend line here and retest that potentially in around $54 per barrel. Well, that's all for me. Thank you very much, and please tune in next week. Thank you.